Hello, welcome back to the workshop. Good to see you. In the workshop today we're going to be doing a review of my new Makita circular saw. I've bought the uh, rail guide and the rail to go with it and um, we're going to see how that compares to my old Black & Decker saw and the DIY circular saw guide that I made in a previous video. All of that's coming up. So perhaps it would help if I explained a little bit about what I'm doing in the workshop at the moment. I'm building some rolling shop cabinets. Um, it's lots of sheet materials, MDF and, um, and melamine coated chipboard that I'm cutting. I'm finding that a circular saw and a saw guide is the most effective way of cutting timber in the shop and an existing rolling cabinet has already been completed using my current setup. Um, the trouble with my existing Black & Decker saw is that the cut depth is really not sufficient for the worktop. So I really wanted a circular saw that had more depth of cut. And the Makita HS7601 J um, has certainly um, done the job as far as the top is concerned. Now one of the things that you will need to do with a new Makita saw and rail guide system is to set it up and uh, trim the um, edge of the, the, the rubber edge strip of the rail guide and then from there then you get your reference point for making your cuts. Uh, I'm kind of curious as to see how this is going to play out in terms of the quality of the cuts. Um, I'm also interested to see how this is going to work out from an ease of use perspective. Um, at the end of the day I want something that's going to be quick and simple and that perhaps can avoid me getting the table saw out at all. So let's see how that goes and um, that's all to come. So first up, the Makita track saw. <sighs> okay, these are saw clamp, uh, saw guide clamps. Um, I had them for the home main. Um, saw guide and I'll be using these again in So I uh, just need to sort out dust extraction and, uh, and then we're good to go. Okay, so let's take a look at the cut. I'm going to zoom in with my other camera. Um, so, I think overall the cut has been very good. Um, certainly the uh, top side, which was supported by the melamine strip, is uh, it's a very clean cut. And, and obviously as is the underside, as the, as the blade is cutting up, that will always be the case. In terms of uh, accuracy, um, let's take a look at that. So certainly there's no trace of the pencil line. Have I got the 50 centimetres exactly that I was looking for? Yep. 
think so. So all in all, that was quite a quite an impressive cut. So I've got one more of these to do, and uh, let's get the other saw guide out for that. Okay, so again we're using the same um, track clamps. Again, lined on, lined up on the pencil marks. It's ready to go. So here we have competing saw. This is the uh, Black and Decker KS40. It's got around about 45 millimeters depth of cut. I made dozens of cuts with this and with the fine tooth blade it does produce a very good result. Um, it'll be interesting to see how with the stock Makita blade um, the Makita saw uh, cut compares. Um, the one thing that is uh, difficult with a homemade guide is that the thickness of the bottom plate of your guide uh, reduces the amount that you can cut through um, and that was one of the factors that caused me to um, decide to upgrade my saw. But um, the other thing is I've had to make um, my own DIY uh, dust extraction. This is actually the um, uh, filler tube off of a petrol can. Just so happens with a bit of tape fit perfectly into the dust port and then my end of the hose fits onto it like that. Okay, so cut number two. So you can see that the cut is not as sharp, it's still very good on the on the back side. This is always where you tend to get the tear out, um, so it does provide a little bit of support to the cut. But um, I'm surprised I've done it on this particular cut, but it does happen quite a lot. It's one of the faults of a DIY rail in the sense that it doesn't lock the saw to the rail. The, the saw can wander into the waste side of the cut and then leave you with this drifting of, of the line. And dust collection wise, um, the Black & Decker saw doesn't really collect as much dust as the Makita, that's very clear. And there is a thin film of dust absolutely everywhere. Um, so I was going to go on to the MDF but I think to be honest um, I'm going to complete the build with the Makita guide. Okay, so one of the things that you can do with rail systems is essentially drop the rail directly onto the workpiece, align it with the uh, pencil marks, and the rail isn't going to go anywhere. So without clamps, let's give this a go and see how this fares. Bearing in mind that the rails work best with a track saw, and I'm just curious as to see whether I can get the same benefit as a track saw with my circular saw. So um, I think all in all um, the Makita saw with the rail and the rail adapter has proven to be um, probably the best saw this afternoon as I've been making these um, panels for my, my cabinet project. Um, some things that I really like about it, um, it's a very powerful saw, um, it's got a good depth of cut um, and I realise I've only really cut through um, melamine face chipboard and MDF this afternoon but um, the quality of the cut um, and the ease at which the saw went through the material um, is, is, is faultless. Um, some, some negative points I guess is that you know, this isn't really a replacement for a track saw. 
Um, for me, I've got a small workshop. Uh, a track saw seemed a little bit out of my price range. This felt like a good compromise, and it is. But it's not a track saw. As far as my old Black & Decker is concerned, you know, it, it does cut very well. It's a light saw. It's much lighter and easier to handle than the Makita. Um, but with the saw guide requiring a great deal of attention um, when you're actually cutting to uh, avoid the saw wandering off, you know, I'm wondering how much use I'm going to get with my old saw guide now I have my Makita. But of course, for you, for you at home, if you make your own saw guide, you keep the saw you've already got and you spend probably no more than about seven or eight pounds putting that together. The cost of some offcuts of plywood or MDF is all it's gonna, it's gonna cost you. Um, the Makita saw was, oh, do you know what, I can't remember. But what I do remember is that the saw guide and the um, rail uh, came to just short of £85. Um, and if it's the guide, adapt, uh, guide rail adapter and the guide rail that you're buying versus something you can make yourself for your own saw at home, then I would suggest probably you're better off making your own guide. Anyway, that's it from me. If you've really liked this video, then please give it a thumbs up and uh, do subscribe to my channel. Um, I'd like to say hi to everybody that's subscribed recently. Uh, your support is more than welcome and um, I look forward to seeing you in, in the next video. Cheerio!